Here's how to set up an Excel solution to an incremental net operating cash flow problem, like problem 6 in Notes Chapter 7. It's useful first to look at a manual solution using the formula in Notes Chapter 7. The incremental net operating cash flow is equal to the incremental sales minus the incremental cash operating costs minus the incremental depreciation times 1 minus the firm's tax rate, and then we add back the depreciation. In the problem, the incremental sales is $3 million per year, cash operating costs $1.2 million per year. The problem tells us that the project is a 10-year project and be depreciated using a 5-year maker's depreciation schedule, and the tax rate is 39%. I've set up the incremental net operating cash flow in a manual solution process using a calculator, incorporating the information from the problem. Here's the $3 million incremental sales, the $1.2 million incremental cash operating costs, we calculate the depreciation by taking the first year's depreciation percent from the maker's table times the cost of the project, and then all that times 1 minus the firm's tax rate, 0.39, and then we add back the depreciation expense to get the first year's incremental net operating cash flow. Repeat the process for year two. And in this particular problem, we're holding the change in sales and change in cash operating costs constant the only thing changing is the depreciation expense per year, which makes it an oversimplified problem. But if we plug in the 0.32, 32% depreciation rate for year two, we get a different net operating cash flow for year two, $2,346,000. We can keep solving these manually all the way through year 10. But this is cumbersome. It's much easier to use Excel, especially because the problem asks us to solve through to the net present value for each of the scenarios. First thing I do is copy down the information from the problem into the spreadsheet. First of all, the rate is 8.5%. We have a 10-year project, so I type in a 1, 2, and you should be able to use the fill command all the way down to year 10. Our incremental sales is 3 million. Our incremental cash cost, 1.2 million. Our depreciation we'll calculate in just a few minutes. 1 minus t is, I'm just going to do the calculation here, 1 minus 0.39. And that's true for all 10 years. We can also use the fill command for these two columns. We need the depreciation percent from the MACRS table. So look in the five-year column on the MACRS table. And we get 20%, 32%, 19.2%, for the next two years. And the residual in year six is 5.76. At that point, the asset is fully depreciated. We can then type in the present value of outflows, or the cost of the project, and then use that to calculate depreciation, which is equal to the project's cost, which the problem says is also the depreciable basis, times the percent depreciation per year from the MACRS table. And if we make that an absolute reference, referring to E4, we can also use the fill command on this column. Then calculate the incremental net operating cash flow, which is equal to, I'm going to open a parentheses, the delta S minus delta C minus delta D, close the parentheses, and I'll take that times 1 minus T, and then add back the incremental depreciation. So my first year's net operating cash flow is $1,878,000. I could then use the fill command again to calculate the rest of these. And then I can do the next task from the problem, and that is calculating the net present value based on these cash flows. So I'll need a present value interest factor, which I can copy from here, paste over here, and then look at that formula. Instead of dollar $H, dollar $1 for my exponent, I want the year indicator. So I want to raise this to the first power. I'm just going to click over here and hit a return. Calculate the rest of those present value interest factors. And then the present values are equal to each of the cash flows times their present value interest factor. And again, use the fill command. 
auto sum to get the present value of inflows. And then I'll calculate the net present value right below that. Present value of inflows, just hit auto sum, it adds all these up. And then the net present value is equal to this present value of inflows minus the present value of outflows. Then we get a net present value of 330,288.45. Part B of the problem asks us what happens to the net operating cash flows and the net present value if the sales turns out to be only 2.5 million annually, 2 million annually, or 1.5 million annually. Now, this isn't very realistic because these uh, cash operating costs are very likely to be at least partially variable. In other words, as sales changes, then the cost should change as well. But the problem says just change the sales and see what happens. So we'll do that in our spreadsheet. It's very easy to do. This is called what if analysis. And as long as you set up the spreadsheet properly, it's very easy to do. Go back to your spreadsheet and instead of 3 million in this column, let's call this 2.5 million. Use our fill command. And everything's recalculated. We find out the net present value goes negative, big time. Negative 1,670,922.71. If we change this to 2 million, again, the uh, net present value should go down accordingly. It's even more negative. And then if we change this to 1.5 million, that present value is even a larger negative number. So this kind of indicates the way businesses make decisions. If we find out that sales is going to be disappointing, then um, it's likely that the net present value is going to go down, and it may go down to a negative number, which indicates that we would reject the project. On the other hand, if sales would be expected to increase, that probably increases the net present value of a project, making it more likely to be accepted. So even though there are elements of this problem that are not very realistic, it does highlight a few critical aspects about business. Then that's how you do problem six in notes chapter seven using Excel.